<laughs> right, this is Showbiz Agenda right here on Zalif 102.1. My name is Arnold Mensah Lavagnon. And uh, we're about to talk about the striker saga. And I have... It's saga, but... Yeah, it be saga. It be saga. <laughs> but before then, let me let me give thumbs up to Caleb Boy. Caleb Boy for actually breaking the story. I mean, he could have just walked past it. Uh, but kind can't see Caleb Boy. We're talking about it. If any good comes out of it for striker... Uh, we owe Caleb that, you know, thank you. So, Caleb, I'm saying my thank you live on air. Big up yourself and do more. Charlie, walk around town and spot some of these guys and, and let us know about them. And so, we come in to help. Well, I have Mauko, who is the CEO of MK Content. Uh, they happen to be the management team for Striker. He's here in the studio with me to really go into the issue, you know, correct the wrongs, uh, fill the... Uh, blank spaces <laughs> and also get us to understand exactly what the situation with striker is as we speak and how it's been before now so that all the issues that we have misconstrued we can put them into perspective you're welcome thank you sir nice and one. um uh, greetings to your your listeners yeah and yeah. greetings to everybody in the studio i mean i've been listening mm -hmm. like every single day and i wish i was coming here on a different not not on this particular issue but yeah. it's all good and i thank you for doing a great job and god bless you, you god know, bless now you, you, you've been a friend to to the to the platform yes I mean, yes, uh, yes right from plaza fm days we've been yes, coming yes, back yes. and forth to you first of all what was your role in the production of um beast of no nation so i was a casting associate casting associate yes um what what does that mean to the so, um there was a casting team there was a casting director from the u.s and I assisted from Ghana with other um, Ghanaian team members. Okay. So you so I worked on the film as you a worked on the film as a casting associate. Yes, in terms so of casting I was I was part of the team. So you were part of the people who selected these guys for yes, the movie. Who found all the actors for the film? You found them. I was part of the people who found all the actors for the film. For for the film. Not just the kids, every actor, every except, actor. except Idris. Wow. Who came on as a producer for the film. So you you, you played a very key role in it. A yes. very very key role yes. and aside from beast of no nation what what other projects have you been on well before beast of no nation um i worked on one of the kovalos um musical film cost, cost of, of money. money yeah cost one of and money. two right i did that and then i've done a lot of glow commercials with panji and mm -hmm. and then i've done a lot of theater you've done a lot of yeah. theater as well so you are aside every other thing you're a casting director as well um after Beast of No Nation, I took to that passion. You, you took to that yeah. passion. And so now you do casting. Yeah. I think you That's, had you had a hand in Side Chick Gang as well. Yeah, oh. I did casting for Side Chick Gang. I've done... Um, I worked on Yolo Season 1. Okay. I've done um, commercials for an international company, like Turkish Airline. Mm. I did Gassem. So we've done different jobs. You've actually. done different yeah. jobs. MK Content, what do you do? So that's a talent management company. And then we manage... Um, different um, actors. We are now basically into um, like actors, mm. but in the future we hope to expand to being crew members mm. and even going into sports and uh, and music. Not and too music. long ago, you wanted to you know sign a musician, but we are not mentioning names. You know. Yeah, I'm still working with him, but yeah. um, we haven't signed him yeah, exactly because I love his talent. Um, mm. If you want me to mention that, I can. Oh well, you can. So Walasi, Walasi is, um, is the one we're talking. We, we about. are still, we are still, still in working. I together. still, I still work with him. And with the actors, official. with the actors, what are the names? So the actors um, currently we manage um, Abraham whenever Ghanaian activities are concerned, even international activities, because we talk to the management in the US, and then also when it comes to um, Fred Amugi, Akofa Ejani, um, Peter Ritchie. Mm. Um, Solomon Fixing O, Daniel DeLong, mm. uh, um, Sicho Chiko, um, Nanama McBrown when it comes to a film um, film um, business, and then Striker, and then I mentioned Akofa already. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow, you're doing great. All these great names to, under your, to God your, your be belt. The glory. Yeah, to God will definitely <laughs> be the glory. So, yeah, so I just wanted you to have. Um, a fair understanding and knowledge about the person we're talking to. That's how come I decided to profile him a bit so people can know okay. who you are right. and why you're here. 
Right. You know, so, <laughs> but this morning you are here on the ticket of striker. Yes. And so I'm going to read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's striker that brought you here. We'll Shall see, so we'll <laughs> see if we can strike you or not. But I'm reading your own press release okay, that please. you put out on 21st of August. Um, and it says MK Content. MK Content Management of Emmanuel Adumkwe. Uh, popularly known as striker of based of no nation fame wishes to address rising issues concerning our client and then you put them into five points the first one emmanuel is not a street beggar as reported we have been looking for him uh, after he ran away from school at cape coast uh, montessori and his phone was with his guardian he has a fully paid ap apartment in cape coast where his other co-actor justice lives with him and his guardian he has also allowance he has an allowance and studying in a private school fully paid by the producers of beast of no nation uh, with contributions from netflix then the second one he made one percent of the profit from the film which is thirty thousand usd that's us dollars his money is not in his custody or his money is not in the custody of zoe Kofi or Danny, as he stated, the money has been put in a trust fund in his name at Barclays Bank. Now that he's 18 years, he needs a valid ID to assess the money. Three, he mentioned in an interview he was paid 10000 for a short film he did called Django Justice, produced by Regina Van Helvet of GH1. He meant to say, he meant to say it in the old currency, which is... 10 million currently thousand ghana cities part of the money was used to buy a suit white shirt tie and a pair of shoes for him to teen choice awards 2016 and the rest was used to buy things for him for school four he still has a good relationship with abraham Atta. and five we currently have him and we will continue to focus on his well-being and work with him we are grateful for the concern of ghanaians and the world at large towards him signed uh, Mauko Kwaji. Uh, so. Okay, first of all, how did you hear the news? Um, so the first thing on Monday morning, I saw the post on Caleb's war, and then Abraham sent it to me. People started sending it to me, so I called Caleb because I know him several times. He didn't answer. So I went for a meeting and then by the time I got to the office, I saw GH1 interviewing him. Then I rushed to GH1 because we've been looking for him. Then I went there and then the management of GH1 sat down with me. We spoke about a lot of issues close to two hours with him. And then when I finished, I asked them, can I take him? They said, yes. Okay. Yeah. And then you took him away. Yes. How did you first get in contact with Striker? Um, it was during the film Beast of No Nation. Did I didn't you, know any of the kids. You didn't know any of them. I didn't know. Any, I didn't know Abraham. I didn't know any of the kids. But through casting, we met all of them. Okay, where? So Striker actually um, was found by Gifty. Which Gifty? She also worked on the film. Okay. Um, Gifty Mausi. Mm. She worked on the film in terms of casting. So she found um, Striker and brought um, him. He auditioned just like all the kids and then he got cast for the role. Okay. So that's how come you got to meet Striker. Yes. How long has it been in Cape Coast? Um, right after the film, which was 2014. Okay. So four years. Yes. Four years. He's four. been in Cape Coast right after yeah. the film. And uh, since when did he go missing? Uh, that wasn't the first time he he ran away because um, he, has, he has run away a couple, like, different times mm. sometimes we go and find him sometimes um he comes to my office okay. that's my back when so, he when he when, goes when, when he or goes. when he runs from when, school yeah, he comes exactly. to your office yeah. sometimes sometimes yeah no after maybe wakoshima then mm. he'll come and then say say oh my back we'll talk again mm -hmm. we'll take him to school and then he will stay for some time and then okay. run away. but this recent one he's been gone for within a month but he came back to the house again that was last week mm. and then he spoke to his guardian Kwabna Sam who was on set so Kwabna Sam is, is their guardian mm. and he's an actor too he okay. played Abraham's father in Beast of No Nation okay. so he was on set at Somania shooting mm. and then when he got to the house Abraham called Kwabna Sam and told him Striker so they spoke and then he told him that 
men ko bi a cheme ba na yakasa okay just the next day he ran away again okay and so that was when um Caleb found him and uh when last when last did he speak to Kwabna Sam and so that we we will know how long he's been missing before he got found the last time they were all they were at, from school mm. he ran away from school not he ran from away the house from, yes yeah, not from, from the school house. Yes. Yes. When last was it? When he spoke to Kwabna Sam? Do you remember? But when he's in school, mm. he doesn't have a phone. So unless maybe they're on a certain break, mm. that's when you can. He he comes home. Do you visit him in school? Um, I haven't been to the school in a while. But last How month, long? no, it's been a while. But last month I was in the apartment to see them when they went on a break. And you met him. And I met Just him. Last I met month. Abraham, and I went. I met um, Justice too. Okay. Uh, is is Kwabna Sam part of management? Yes, he's part of. Management. No, I manage him as well. You no, is Kwabna Sam part of MK? He's under management, so we manage. Okay, him. you he's manage an actor. him. Yeah, he's, he's an actor. He's your artist. Yes, exactly. Under your record label. Exactly. Him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So he takes care of him. Exactly. And you hardly visit as as management. We talk, but if it comes to the house, we talk. But where is the house? Is that? Cape Coast. The house is in Cape. Yeah, so he goes. Da, is Coast. he is he in a boarding house? It's, yeah, it's a boarding house. He is in a boarding house. Yes. And so when he goes on break and he goes to the house, that's when you are able to talk to yes. him. So until he comes to the house, there's no communication. Unless there's something that we want him to do. Right. Fine. So but we check on. We talk to some of the teachers in the school. You talk to some yeah. of the teachers. The in teachers the there. We talk to them. How is him? Like how is his his lifestyle like? He's a respectful boy, mm -hmm. but it's just unfortunate um, where he finds himself because he was brought up on the street. He grew up on the street. Mm. Till after the film, he, his mom and dad are, are all dead. So he has lived on the street all his life till we found him for the film. Mm. So that's how I know him. That's how you know him. Yeah. Wow. But and he's a very respectful boy. He's a very respectful boy. How has working with him been like? It's been good and difficult, but um, it's our work. We are trying so hard to help. You're trying so much yeah. or so hard to help. Yeah. Okay. And so when you had the uh, situation, that was Monday, uh, what was your decision? What did you talk about with management? What plans did you make for him and all? I want, I want us to get the story proper. And then we so begin to when I met in. him, me, I was sad for him mm. because that's not supposed to be where... Or how it's supposed to be presented to the world. Because I don't think that um, anybody will put their child in that situation. So I was sad. When I met him, I was sad. And I asked him, is this what you want? And then he said no. So from there, I took him to see the line producer, Danny Dama. Mm. In the water. No, why not? Feel free. Feel free. We went to see um, the line producer Danny Dama, mm. who he mentioned his name in the GH1 interview. So he had a lengthy conversation. I mean, I left them. From there, we took him home. Mm. Even yesterday, I was with him. We spoke again. I asked him that what do you want? He said he doesn't want to go to school. So we we have to think of how best we can help him to make sure that even though he's not in the classroom, he gets some sort of education. Right. Because that's very important. If he wants to continue acting, he has to be able to communicate one in English. Mm. Because interviews and things like that, you, you can't always get it if wow. you can't communicate. And even to read your script, you have to be able to get some sort of education. Mm. So we want to make sure he has some sort of education, mm. even though it might not be like a class, like a formal education, mm. but you get some sort of education. Wow. And then whatever he wants has to do to help him will do it is this the first time he's telling you he doesn't want to go to school no he has said it a couple of times but we like we i keep telling him mm. that at least finish primary school oh because he has never been to school so what stage is he he's in class five now he's in class five yes. how old is he he's 18 he's 18 yeah. class five yeah is he able to read and write properly he's able to he's able to he can't write properly he can't read properly mm. but he can communicate a little bit he can speak a little yeah, bit. yeah exactly before you met him or when you met him was he schooling then 
No, he was he has never been to school. So when you took him to school, what class did you put him? He started from the lowest level, class one. He started from so class they, one. they 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 keep like he they had private classes just mm -hmm. to make sure they can he can get better and they push him to the next class because they he can't just go through the school without um being able to uh, know what really he's about um, you said he's lost his parents both of them yes uh, have you gotten in touch with any other family member uncles aunties cousins yes. so be, uh, during the film um the custom process yeah. we went to the family house where at, uh, not kaneshi okay so we met the family we told them about the film and there was one auntie actually who we 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 spoke to and then from there, when we went to shoot the film, from there we we went back to the house, and mm. then we told them what plan we have for him, that we are taking him to school, mm. and they they said okay, because at the first place, mm. even though he has a family house, he was living on the street, so it, we didn't see the vibe that they they were really concerned. You didn't see the vibe that they were really, really concerned. concerned. What's the name of this auntie we're talking about? I can't remember her name. You can't remember no, his I auntie's can't. name. I can't remember. But you could tell that they are not really concerned about the boy. Yeah, because really, if they were concerned, he wouldn't be on the street. Because even when we took him to the house the first time, mm. like, it didn't look like they wanted him to even stay there. It didn't look like the family yeah. wanted him to yeah, stay because there. Why? Why do you think I, it would look like honestly, that? Honestly, I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. Because uh, if they really care... Or if they were really concerned, he wouldn't be on the streets all his life till we found him. Till you find, yeah. you found him. So from Monday, have you had any calls from family? No. After all, what has happened? None no. of them has contacted no you. No one. And no one. We've been waiting that someone from family will call us. We'll but call. How many years is he supposed to stay under your management? So I don't have a signed contract with him. You don't have a signed contract because he's with a minor. Him. You don't sign a contract with a minor. Okay. You can sign a contract with. Um, his parents. Now that he's 18, do you intend signing a contract with him? We, we still have like an open conversation unless maybe s someone comes or the family comes and say that now that our son is 18, we want him back and then they can have him and then if they want to put him under, under different management, that but, is fine. But did you propose to sign a contract with any of his family members then? No. You didn't propose? No. So he's, he's after, under your management by word of mouth? Yes not legally not we don't have anything documented so is there any benefits you would have taken should he have blown or gotten something would you have taken something as a result of you managing him well in the management there's always a percentage the manager gets. but it's not legal you yeah. haven't signed anything yeah, the, or the verbal, it still agreement, works. verbal it, agreements it works word of mouth yeah so what was the percentage like <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. want to put it out. You don't want to put... Yeah. What, what was your percentage out of the uh, $3,000 or... T was it $30,000? I wasn't managing by then, so I have no... You weren't right. managing him by then. Yeah, so when did you come into the picture? After the movie. After the movie. But in terms of contract for all the kids who were involved, so what they were paid actually on the film wasn't like a big money because it was an independent... It was an independent producer. Mm. So when an independent producer is going to produce a film, they don't have a big budget, mm. but they have a big vision. They have a big vision so, and not a big budget. Exactly. So mm. we spoke, they gave the, the children some money. And then as part of the contract, we were able to mm. get them <clears throat> that when the film make profit, they make one percent. And he made the one percent, which is the thirty thousand. Okay. And Abraham also made a thirty um, thousand dollars. Abraham also made thirty thousand yeah. and he also made thirty thousand. Exactly. How old is Abraham now? He's 17. He's 17. Yeah. Where is his money? It's with his parents. The money but is with also his parents. But also, for Abraham, he also has a trust. He also so has a trust. at Fidelity Bank. Uh, his is at Fidelity Bank. Yes. And then Strikers is where? Barclays Bank. Wow. Okay. 30,000. Yes. It's there. USD. And USD. Yeah. And who signed for that? For what? For the money. Who are the signatories to the money? Since he, he's not 18 or he wasn't 18 then. Okay. Uh, under whose care or who took the money there and made it official? Okay, so the money was taken there by Zoe, who was also part of the casting mm. team um, when we were doing the film. She is from the state. Okay. She She's actually with the production company. Mm. So she came and then together with Striker and then one gentleman called Kofi. Yeah. They went to the bank. By then, I don't think I was around. You weren't around? I wasn't around. 
So they went to the bank and did um, the trust for the boy. But you are aware that the money is there. I'm aware. The money is there. Yeah. Now his dad, teacher Norte, and mom is sister Comfort. I mean, they're all they're of blessed memory, though. Yes. Teacher Norte and uh, sister Comfort. Now you said that he he's run away from school a couple of times, yeah. and you find him, and he goes. Now he he's under your management. You haven't put it on paper. So when the kid keeps getting missing and getting found, didn't you get alarmed? And if you were alarmed, what measures did you put in place to ensure that he doesn't run away anymore? Well, one, we we had a we had a lengthy conversation with him, mm. and then and I know his problem that osi osi adi na enko, osi osi adi na enko enko yeah okay. And then I keep telling him that it's not about your grades. Mm. It's about you understanding what we want you to do. So, Ude, go up to class six. He wanted to be a welder. A welder? Yeah. Okay. So, um, the school had even spoken to Kofordia Sectec. Mm. So that from there, they can possibly get him to go and study. The welding. Work. Exactly. But you wanted him to get to class six. Exactly. Least. Exactly. So that you can communicate. Mm. So that you... People don't laugh at you when you're even talking. Mm. Because in Ghana, all oh, cover of now you mistake cry yes, sir, yes, and sir. things like that. And we don't want that to become of him. So whenever he runs away and he comes, we have a conversation. How da- how does he arrive? Say on I don't know for some reason I don't know from how Cape he does From Cape Coast to Accra. Yeah. So how how does it happen? How does he end up at home? Have sometimes, you asked him how he arrived? Bec- sometimes he's giving some like he's giving some money like Whenever he needs it, mm. so I think he uses some of that money to to come to escape. To escape. <laughs> yeah. When he escapes, where does he go? Sometimes he said he goes to polo club. Polo sometimes, club. Sometimes he, he goes to Agubloshi. Sometimes he goes to Osu. To do what? So his friends are there. As a child, or where, when he was growing up, those are the people he knew. That's where he grew up from. From the streets. From the streets. So his friends are, yeah. you know. The and streets. then I, I remember telling him that if you want to go and visit your friends, tell us, we'll put you in a car. Mm-hmm. We'll go and drop you there. Spend time with your friends. When you're done, we'll come and pick you. If you have anything to give, you, we'll you give, give it to them. them. And then there was a time we even took some of um, the Tom shoes mm-hmm. of Abraham. And then he went to his friends to give it to them right. at North Kaneshi. So we've been trying to keep him mm-hmm. so that he will know who really is but it's been difficult but we will continue to work with him but what went into the decision of taking him all the way to cape coast to school because we know that if it's nakra it's easy to run away and um so you knew that he had tendencies of running away from school before you even put him in school no yeah normally and then i've done this before there's there's a kid that we I want to do a short film in the Volta region on the lake, like yeah. close to the lake. Yeah. And then there's a kid we we cast from the community. Yeah. They take him to fishing every time, mm. and they stay close to the lake. When you put such a kid to school there, when he closes from school, the lake is just close to him. He can always go there. So in order not to get him there, we brought him to Accra. Okay. So just to take him from here, so that whenever he wants to come. It will, he, be, exactly. it will be difficult for him to get here. Exactly. Now, you put him in a school, and the school keeps... I wouldn't say the school allows him to escape, but he escapes anyways. Have you contacted the school to find out how he escapes and what they can do to keep this boy in school? <laughs> I know the school. You've been to we the school? We found before. the school for the boy. So, I've been to the school several times. But anyway... So yeah, have the you, one have who is you, yes have you spoken to yeah, the we, management of the school yeah. to find out how he escapes yeah we have we, and what do they say sometimes when they're on break he'll run away so when it's a boarding when, when, school yeah. there, there's a process to get out of the school how yeah. does he run away and what do they do when he comes back is there ways to keep him in the school but the you are attended time, boarding school, the last so you don't time, get out easily. the last the last one before he ran away mm. he signed an attacking he signed and yeah. taken. And then he was explained to that you can't con because when you do this, you, you bring shame to the school too. Mm-hmm. Not just yourself, not just your management, but to the school. 
So he's, he was explained, he, we had explained to him, and then his son had not taken that. He runs away again, he should be expelled, thinking that that will make him stay in the school. But again, he did. So would you say the school uh, hasn't kept an eye on him properly? I think the school has done a great job from the time we took the case to the school. By allowing him to keep escaping, not once, not well, twice, not I, three times. I know the school have tried because I know I know what they've done to these boys. What including, have they done? Including justice. Because there are three... There has are he two, ever been punished aside from the undertakings? I don't know if the school has punished him. You don't know if the school in has terms ever of, punished him? In terms him. of beating. Not beating per se, but has he been put through any punishment of a sort to deter him? Yeah, I understand they've punished him before, but I can't remember what the punishment is, but they've punished him before. They've punished him before. Yeah. Are you thinking of changing the school for him? We, like I said, he doesn't want the school. So if you put him there again, he'll run. So what do you So we are thinking of giving him some formal education, but not in the classroom. Informal education. Yeah. And what, what are you looking at putting him to learn? Sorry, it doesn't have to be a classroom. Yes, I understand. But what trade? No, f we still need him to get education, but it's not going to be in the classroom. It's not going to be in the classroom. Yeah. Maybe private teaching. Exactly. You get a teacher for him to yeah. teach him at home, so that he doesn't. Maybe, maybe also feel embarrassed sitting among kids because knowing that he's I'm 18 old and, uh, yeah, and he's exactly. in class five yeah. and all. Yeah. So have you started working towards that private teaching? Yes. You've started. Yes. Where is he now? Is he with you or he's? He's with his guardian now. His guardian is not in Accra. They're in Accra now. He's moved yeah. to Accra. No. The guardian has a place in Accra. Mm -hmm. He stays in Accra. Mm. But so who takes care of him in Cape Coast? He goes there. The guardian goes there. Yeah. How often? Most often. Most often. Yeah. But you don't get to go there more often. And you are the manager. <laughs> I have so many actors I'm managing. Okay. And he's not... He's one kid. And someone has eye over him. Mm -hmm. I can't be going there every day. I'm going to Cape Coast to see one kid who is even in a boarding school. Okay. Okay. So you expect the school to take care of that? He's in a boarding school. <laughs> What's his relationship like between um, himself and Ibrahim Atta? They are good friends. They are good friends. Yeah. They are very and good friends. They, 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 don't, uh, they don't have any issue. And then yesterday, I don't really know if I should really put this out, but yeah, you I, I think I'll leave it. No, no, no. You can't but, put it out. No, it's you fine. Can, what happened? It. They had a conversation. No, I'll leave it. No, let's... let's no, no, I'll leave it. Um, so the the truth is that they are, they are not fighting they talk mm. they swim together they have good relationships so they have good relationship yeah. right has he ever spoken to you about his relationship with Abraham Atta? yeah but these are two kids they don't have problem mm. and then yesterday when i was talking but, to but he says he's been shouting at him and all these are like he kids. sees clearly that uh he's been sidelined like on, on shadam pema semsa why i can see me you know he, he he feels that way I don't think so. But they also see these are two kids. Okay. It's just like having Shatawali and Stone Boy. Mm. What about them? I'm just saying it's, it's an example. Like no, having Shatawali. I'm not saying But then they grow. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. But if um Shatawali and Stone Boy have problem. Mm. <laughs> I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are two right. adults yeah, two they can adults. handle their own issues mm. but these are two kids who are nice today then the next day they are fighting over something mm. so for instance if Abraham's phone is there and you go and pick it and then you have an argument does that mean he doesn't treat you well these are kids that do they eat together, they swim together, do a lot of things together but again people always want to hear the negative right how much was he paid when he featured in uh, Regina's film? <laughs> it was paid 1,000 CDs. 1,000 CDs. Yes, sir. How much of that money went to him? So, physically, I don't think anything was given to him directly. He didn't get because any money. He was, he, like I said, when he had money that goes to them like every time. Not just him, him and Justice. Okay. So... Part of the money was used to buy like the suit and then the things that I mentioned, the press statement. Mm. And then some was used to buy some things for him to go to school. To go to school. Things that he, he himself want. So it was used to. Do you to. remember some of these things that he wanted that you purchased for him? I remember a school bag was bought out of that. Mm -hmm. But some of these things, I don't, I can't say them for sure because we make sure the guardian oversee that. Because I'm a manager, the guardian is supposed to just like if you're managing a kid for instance when it comes to abraham i don't 
um, um, look at things that he's buying. Okay. Because his parents, his will, parents will take exactly. care of that. But I, because this kid had no, like, um, parent, that's how come we trust the guardian to to do that yeah. for him. Are you looking at getting some jobs for him, or you just want him to go to school now? We want him to work because if it doesn't work, we don't make money. Mm. So he needs to work. So if it doesn't work, then it's it's also difficult. So have you been looking for jobs for him? Yes. Recently, we just finished a film called Boga. You finished a film called Boga? He was supposed to be on it, but because he ran away, we couldn't find him for the role. Because he ran away, you couldn't find him yeah. for the role. Yeah. But he was supposed to have been featured on the film. On the film, yes. Boga. Yeah. Then he ran away. Then yeah. you lost. I know. How do you intend cutting this runaway story? I'm, I'm, I'm going to take views from so that we don't take. Yes. How do, you, how do you intend cutting that story? So that he won't go to, uh, so that he's not in the class. Once he's not in the classroom, he has assured us that he's not going to run away. Once he's not in the classroom, he has assured you that yeah. he won't run away. Yeah. Do you think it's the best decision he has taken? As an adult, who is taking this from a child? Is that his, I think the it's, best a, it's a very good decision. To stay out of the classroom. Yeah. Do you think it's the best decision? Yeah, because... Okay. So you have to guide him. So, striker staying out of school is the best decision you think he has taken? Well, he's an adult now. He's 18. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay.